A NASCAR driver and China's top bioenergy expert lead very different lives. Any geographic and language differences were put aside as both heartily endorsed biofuels and ethanol at the annual Southeast Biofuels Conference held in Tifton, Georgia recently. Rick Trepto was there. Running well with NASCAR and ethanol frame NASCAR driver Kenny Wallace's keynote address. Ethanol is a high performance fuel. You know, and then of course they all have fun about the moonshine. Remember, until we turn into ethanol, it's, it's a high octane, if you know what I mean. You know, it was liquor, but it's a very clean burning fuel. True knowledge was all he said he wanted to give the conference. It's good for our security in the United States. It's good for the family farmer. And most of all, what I tell everybody about ethanol, don't overlook the number one thing, that it's an American-made fuel. S support American-made fuel. A panel of global experts in biofuels gave the conference a look at successes and unsolved challenges for biofuel science. A top Chinese biotechnologist says sweet sorghum can be grown in arid regions for biofuel. The need for ethanol is huge because China produces only 50 percent of the oil it needs. Sweet sorghum, there's a green, uh, like a corn, can be used as food and the, and the feed. And the stalks is rich of sucrose, like a sugar cane. We can use the sucrose to produce ethanol. The U.S. speakers agreed there is still a bigger commitment needed from Washington. All the private industries springing up don't have the money now, or will they in the near future? The finite sources of fossil energy is going to run out at some point. And so all of the world has got to be concerned about how do we power ourselves? How do we provide energy? in the absence of coal, petroleum, natural gas, and those sorts of things. The U.S. speakers agreed there is still a bigger commitment needed from Washington. All the private industries springing up don't have the money now, or will they in the near future? You don't wait until you need the results to start doing research. That would be too late. That's foolish. We've made a lot of progress, but we're not really doing the kind of things in research that I think we ought to be doing in order to make a transition from fossil energy to a sustainable source of energy. So aside from Kenny Wallace's support of ethanol, I asked him about his racing successes. He's about a week away from becoming 48. Wallace won his first race in 1982. Since then, he's had 425 nationwide series starts. I love what I do and I have a lot of inspirations out there. Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, 52 years old, still running the top 10 in the Sprint Cup Series. And I'll take the advice my brother Rusty gave me. He says, Kenny, he says, you, you don't listen to nobody that tells you you should quit because of your age. He says, you just go, ah, la, 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 because he said, my brother Rusty said, I quit two years too early. So I'm going to race until I get it out of my system and as long as I'm competitive. I'm Rick Trepto for the Georgia Farm Monitor.